fossils of a super predator were just found in Antarctica. Apparently. I don't know. Let's find out. Antarctica wasn't always a frozen wasteland. Wait, what? It wasn't? <laughs> then why is it called Antarctica? I guess maybe before it was Antarctica, it was not named anything, and that's when it was... You're telling me Antarctica was not always frozen? A long really? time ago, it was full of life. And 56 million years ago, something terrifying stalked its jungles. That's a lot of millions. A giant flesh-eating bird. It was around six feet tall and weighed as much as a lion. For millions of years, nothing could challenge it. So why did it disappear? And could there be even bigger predators still hidden beneath the ice? Paleontologists found two massive claw bones in Antarctica, sharp, curved, and powerful, belonging to this bird. They were dug up from the Eprisian aged rocks of Seymour Island, which means they're around 40 to 50 million years old. Their shape left no doubt. These were the so-called terror birds. Their scientific name is Forest Rhapsody, some of the most fearsome predators to ever walk the earth. But how they do you find- And didn't even need wings. Instead, they could sprint at breakneck speeds, like ostriches from a nightmare. But how do you find the claw in the snow? For huh? millions in the of ice. years, I'm confused. these birds ruled South America. But now, for the first time, their presence has been confirmed in Antarctica. Oh. No mm -hmm. surprise here. Back then, yeah, no South surprise. America and Antarctica were still connected, allowing animals to easily oh. commute between continents. Really? So these birds I probably didn't even know migrated wait. south to a- Wait, I thought they were talking about Antarctica. Oh, they are talking about Antarctica. Wait, what? It used to be connected? I'm just stupid, guys. Adapt to life on Antarctica's prehistoric landmass. Fun fact about Antarctica, guys. Um, I was just in South Africa last month. Or I guess it was like a month ago now. And I saw penguins there. I'll pop up a picture. And you know why penguins are there? Because this is the closest tip of the world to Antarctica. So I guess the penguins just swam over there, I don't even know. <laughs> it didn't just survive here, it thrived. But at some point, this nightmare of an animal vanished. Why? Yeah, tell me. Most likely because of the temperature changes. Oh. Antarctica was cooling, slowly turning into the frozen wasteland we know today. Its prey may have declined, leaving the predator without enough food. Eventually, it disappeared leaving no descendants behind. Researchers hope that they'll find a complete skeleton eventually. But again, how do you They're find it in the snow? They're also wondering where there might be even- I guess the same way you find it in the dirt. Bigger species waiting to be discovered. Perhaps these birds evolved into a completely new Antarctic lineage. Ooh. But for now, all we have are two giant creepy claws. Oh. People often it's think that there are almost no animals fossil. or plants in Antarctica. But that's not true at all. I love penguins. Penguins waddle around and forget the cute tiny ones. Antarctica used to have six foot tall monsters. The emperor. Uh. A six foot tall penguin? That's taller than me. No, really? Oh, I guess. I guess. I'm stupid. I just saw like baby penguins. That's why I'm like, oh, I've, all, yeah, I've only ever seen penguins like this big. But I guess there are bigger penguins. Fur penguins mm. are the largest penguin species alive today. They can dive over a thousand eight hundred feet there. deep. Okay, I'm just thinking of like the movie Happy Feet, how there's big ones. Never mind. Forget what I'm saying. Hold their breath for over 20 minutes. There were giant ancient penguins around 38 million years ago. They were the size of humans. Fossils show they had long, sharp beaks, making them terrifying hunters of fish and squid. The fish there are also absolutely fascinating. Forget giant squids. Colossal squids are nightmares even bigger. Some reach over 40 See, feet scary long to me. with massive, super sharp Wait. beaks and eyes the size of dinner plates. This is still a thing? Is that what you're telling me? Finally, orcas. You're telling me that's still a thing. Ain't no way I was swimming in the same ocean as that thing. What is it, the Indian Ocean? I think that's the Indian Ocean, right? My geography is a little off, guys. But whatever that ocean is in between South Africa and Antarctica, you're telling me these things were in there and I was swimming in there? The Antarctic Ocean. They hunt in packs, working together like a wolf pack of the sea to take down seals, fish, and even massive w Oh, perfect! They eat seals, and we were with the seals. You're telling me that thing could've just come and ate me? There are even tiny plants, like moss and algae, Antarctic hair grass, and pearl wart. They somehow survive against all odds. There are many other myths going on about Antarctica. For example, some people think that when icebergs break off from glaciers, they immediately start drifting straight into the open ocean until they melt. But the reality is way more chaotic. First, 
When an iceberg breaks off from That's a glacier, what the waves, or ice shell, it right? has to deal with underwater obstacles. It can stay stuck on the seafloor for decades without moving. Then they get caught in powerful whirlpools and spin in place for months. One iceberg, a 23A, spent nearly 40 years frozen in place before finally breaking free, only to get caught in a swirling ocean vortex for another eight months. Eight months isn't that bad. That, their paths are influenced by ocean currents, tides, winds, and even underwater topography. They don't just float freely, their movements are full of literal unexpected twists. And speaking of glaciers, another strange rumor is that some humans can't travel more than 311 miles inland in Antarctica because of an impassable ice wall, freezing jet fuel, deadly winds, and no oxygen. I want to see it. But can I see this? Completely false. Okay, never mind, I can't see it. Antarctica has been explored by planes, oh. vehicles, and even scientists right. on foot. There's an entire research station sitting at the South Pole. People Ooh. live there all year long. Really? The all year ice long, eh? is real. Oh, really? A massive That's ice what I see. rising above the ocean. But that isn't some secret barrier. It's an ice shelf. These are thick slabs of ice that form when glaciers slowly flow off the land and spread over the ocean. Almost three-fourths of Antarctica's coastline is made up of them. But they don't form some giant ring around the world. <laughs> Antarctica is one of the most extreme places on Earth, but we've conquered its challenges and we keep learning more about it every year. That's why every year, millions of dollars are poured into keeping research stations running, protecting wildlife, and making sure the people who live there have everything they need. But where does all this money go? Where does it go? Well, Antarctica stations are basically small cities. There's no snow. There's electricity. There's barely any snow, guys. Water purification, food storage, and medical facilities. Guys, the this biggest station, like Antarctica. McMurdo, is basically a town with over 1,000 people in summer. But have you seen this, guys? When you think of a vacation, you probably don't think of Antarctica, right? But you could go to Antarctica on a vacation. I saw this on like TikTok or something. But like, look at luxury stays in Antarctica. Wait, that doesn't even look at like Antarctica. There's not even snow. I'm, I'm a little confused. Look at this. Look at this. This is Antarctica. Look, you can see snow. Look at this. It's like a little. Oh, that's a cruise ship, though. I don't know. Maybe I just saw a cruise ship. I don't know. Who knows? It has everything from a fire station to a gym. The South Pole Station is super deep inland, so it's one of the hardest places to supply. Getting food and fuel there requires airplanes flying thousands of miles in extreme cold. But the internet loves a good mystery. When Google Maps revealed what looked like a massive doorway in Antarctica, conspiracy theorists went wild. People joked about everything from Bigfoot's vacation home to a secret base or even a Star Trek spaceship hangar hidden in the ice. What? But there's a way simpler and less exciting explanation. It's actually a grounded iceberg, a chunk of ice that got stuck in shallow water and is now slowly melting. Oh. As ice moves across the landscape, it flows around bumps and obstacles, creating odd shapes. The process of melting, breaking apart, and refreezing can carve ice into unexpected forms. Antarctica also has incredibly strong downward blowing winds that sculpt ice into dramatic formations over time. But where's the fossil? No secret doorway, unfortunately. Show me the fossil. And speaking of doors, for years, Ushuaia, Argentina, has been called the gateway to Antarctica. Oh. The last stop before the icy continent. Oh. The place where expeditions begin. Rural South Africa. Where but is there's it? another option. Oh. Punta Arenas, Chile. Let's compare them. Ushuaia is closer to Antarctica. You know what? Let it's me see. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Look at this. What are you talk? What are they talking about? Look, at South Africa's right here, and Antarctica's down here. Oh, but there is closer places here, right? Look on the left. Sorry, my geography is way off, so I don't even know what's on the left and what's on the right there. I guess where the penguins were. Sorry. Was what is that? South? The southest point. Hopefully that's south. If not, I'm just sounding like, like a stupido. But. The southest point of South Africa is where the penguins are. Maybe. And that's why they were there. I don't know. Departure point for tourists going on cruises. But no regular flights to Antarctica. No major scientific bases operating from here. It's basically controlled by the military, which refuses to allow private flights. Only commercially operated ships. It's a weird-looking plane. 
Yes, Punta Arenas is further from Antarctica, but 22 countries and global organizations use it as their main base. Piglets! There are regular flights to Antarctica happening there every year. Private airlines can actually operate here, making it the real air connection to Antarctica. Ushuaia may have the best location physically, but Punta Arenas uh, so actually there. runs mm -hmm. the show. Argentina made a huge error in picking its Antarctic airbase. Instead of setting up a simple, accessible base at sea level, man, that snow they just looks so depressing. I'm so happy it's almost summer here. Whew. Rambio Base, very high on rough terrain, completely Early impossible summer, right? to reach by summer? land. Everything has to be flown in by helicopter, making operations slow, expensive, and frustrating. For 50 years, Argentina stubbornly stuck to this bad decision, while Chile set up efficient, well planned bases that the world now uses. If things don't change, Ushuaia will be nothing more than a tourist stop. But what's terrifying is that Antarctica seems to be returning to its past. It's supposed to be the coldest place on Earth, but something shocking happened just recently. <gasps> what was For it? the first the time in recorded history, temperatures in Antarctica broke 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That means Celsius, This brother. continent is buried brother, under... what is that in Celsius? 20! Really? That's pretty warm. Because guys, right here, right now, in Calgary, it's only 13, so it's warmer than... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Miles of ice. <laughs> Usually, temperatures there can drop to minus 112 degrees. But in the winter of 2020, scientists recorded an insane 69 degrees on Seymour Island, hotter than many places in Europe at that time. Scientists believe there are several reasons for that. First, there are changes in the way heat moves around the planet's waters. Second, melting permafrost due to the planet warming it looks like the climate is changing faster than expected. That's it for today. But what so about the hey, fuel? The fuel, fossil fuel, not a fossil fuel, but the fossil. Okay, what even is the definition of a fossil? The remains. Yeah, they, did they talk about the remains or did all they say was a footprint? I don't know. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to slap that like button, subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you guys in the next one.